All right, we got another video from Mr. Otaku Spirit called Most Anticipated Fall 2024 in Anime. Top 10 new and returning titles, and I think it's the era or season of Isekai coming upon us. I'm not sure if that's all Isekai, but this season has been very rom-com dominated, right? And it's kind of, kind of a snoozer season, not gonna lie. Kind of a sleeper season, but hey, let's see what we got. Ladies and gentlemen, the fall 2024 anime season is fast approaching. In okay. less than three weeks, we will have once again over 60 anime titles Jesus. all just being thrown in our faces. Well, very heavy. Yeah, and probably like 80% of that shit is just garbage, just pumped out by Katakawa. Listen, I don't have any or I don't have any grift with Katakawa, but like goddamn, bro, the amount of mid isekais and random shows that they just pump out, it is so sad. Heavy season for returners. We also have a bundle of exciting new titles to come. The fall right. season includes everything from gushing over magical girls without the ludes, a slime What? What? Hey, hey, yo. Slime girl wet my bed. Hey, yo. Banana. The return of the <laughs> banana. I think this is. I, I think this is. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Don Don Don, right? The banana one. Banana. Yeah. The return of the Subaru Re -Zero. Hate Threads. Who will get added to Bell's harem this time? You got something on your face. Hot Ninja Maid. Oh. Return of the. Yo. Hot Ninja Maid. Just the art of this. I don't know. It looks really good. Maybe it's something with the hairs. This, this girl looks really good. Ninja Maid. Return of the OG Rama. gender swap Disney version. Thighs. Yes. Just, Jeez. just thighs. <laughs> that is so aggressive. You can see literally her cheek right here. More Yokotaro torture. Interview with yokai girls. What Another the? shrine made in harem. Not that I'm complaining. The adaptation that is triggering Twitter. Flat Earthers, the anime. What? I adopted a replacement sister only to fall in love with her. More edgy edge. I adopted a replacement sister only to fall in love with her. Hmm. Days of my stepsister, but better? Boy edgeness. Shogunat. Arslan Senki. My dead-end job as a magical girl is ran by a pervert. And Beastars might actually finally return. I'll bl Wait, is season two Beastars happening? Leave it when I see it. Now, since... It, it's not, right? It, it's just hinted, right? 99% of anime fans can't even watch all these shows. I'm here to give my top 10 most excited returners and new series to help you out. So all sit right. back, get your... Beastars is on season three? I mean, it hasn't ever gotten voted in in a community poll. Wonder if it's a final season coming up? She, I kind of want to cover it. But no one's ever asked for it, so we, maybe we can just chill for it now. Get your notepad ready, and let's dive right in. Let's so go. let's start things off with the returners first in no particular order. Yes. Re-Zero Re -Zero. Season 3, uh -huh. massive amounts of hypes from me. Now, yes, yes we had a little bit of a hang-up by the... No, no, can I watch this? Yeah, yeah, I don't think he's going to go into detail about spoilers and shit like that, right? Yes, unfortunate leaks that were going out. But I stay clear of them. I want to stay right. as pure as possible coming into this season. And I am super, super hyped for it. Yes, being a Subaru apologist. <laughs> the felt camp! Rom G, man! Holy... Also, um, fun... It's not a spoiler. It's a little trivia. Did you guys know? That these two little girls that was in season one when Felt entered the royal selection uh, part, these two girls were holding their dresses, but they are actually related to the Appa guy. The Appa salesman, Kadoman Rish, he is their uncle. Isn't that crazy? The Appa dude, man. I can't wait for it. And it couldn't come sooner because, yes, I'm still reeling over the fact that we have a wait for more Mushoku Tensei. The PVs look super hype. I'm super excited to see what's coming up. And I can't wait. Bleach Thousand Year Blood Wars is coming back, of course. <sighs> can we ever cover this in our channel? I really want to. But again, Battle Shonen is just a topic that's hard to push down you guys' throats. First, now, I kind of feel like I'm falling off on this series, but I'm still excited for it. It still goes down as one of my favorite long-running epics. Damachi Season 5 is coming. That's right, I'm like, yo, this arc is looking hilarious, man. <laughs> the trailer where Belle is doing like 10 reps of confessing properly with the flowers. They're just getting ready. I mean, I was, I loved season four. I think they did a fantastic yes. job. It was a nice return of the series. Great storytelling. Is season five going to be as epic and as dangerous as season four? I think that's impossible, right? It doesn't need to be. Maybe it will with Freya entering the fray, but... Season 4 was so, like, so heavy. It was, like, 
disaster incarnate. It was no longer fun times. We're just fucked for the entire season, bonding with Ryu. It was absolutely brutal. And you're telling me this arc is even worse? Or at least it's brutal? Okay. Having the creator on board with it, he was doing a fantastic job of keeping them on track. But I will admit, I will admit, the trailers for season five don't look particularly exciting, but- It was funny to me, the comedy of Belle getting ready for a date with Seer, but... Exciting, yeah. I don't know if there's anything hinting at insane epic fights or shit like that. We'll see. Maybe it'll surprise me. I'm always pumped for more Domino right. so I'm super looking forward to it. So All online, right. alternative Gungel online, season two. Yeah, you guys ain't gonna fucking watch this shit. Oh, please watch SAO Gun Gun Girl online, you know, fucking uh, side story, please. Yeah, and then we fucking pull it and no one cares about it, you fucking liars. So, yes, many people are probably wondering why the hell is this on Andrew's list. Yes, I wasn't too favorable of season one, but there... Andrew's list? Oh, did we just get lore drop about Otaku's spiritual name? There was a lot in there that I actually liked. I think it's fun whenever it tries to be fun. I just kind of fell off on the series towards a later part of the first season because it got too heavy on the drama. It just didn't fit it. But whenever mm. the series is trying to have fun, that's where it does really good. So I'm hoping going to season two, we get more of the fun and less of the melodrama. Dragon Ball Daima. Yeah, you guys aren't going to fucking watch SAO fucking as GGO shit, bro. Like, people only care about GGO because of the core cast in season two with Shino and fucking Kirito, bro. Like, with the complete separate side characters, ain't nobody care. I'm not saying that the anime is bad, I'm saying, like, for my audience, like, you guys don't actually care about this shit. Now, Dragon Ball Daima, I don't know what I'm going to do about this. I, I kind of want to check it out. It's coming, yes, of course. That series I'm super pumped for. I'm a massive old-time fan of Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball in general, so I'm really happy to see that coming around. Yes, of okay. course, this is marking seven months after the passing, the unfortunate passing of Akira Toriyama. Toriyama, and this is something that he was working on up until his <laughs> Vegeta, they're the kids? <laughs> Everyone's chibi mode? All right. Passing. So hopefully his heart is still in this project. And Vegeta is a kid with that hairline, bro. <laughs> Vegeta, my oh man, what is going on? This is pretty much going to be his swan song, so to speak. So I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, rest his soul. He's such a fantastic creator, and I hope that his passion's in here. Now, if you had to ask me what my most anticipated of the entire fall season overall of mm. everything, number one would be Natsumi's Book of Friends. I can already tell that this series would flop immediately in my channel, but this series is probably like a super underrated, like beautiful deep story that my audience could never appreciate. Number one would be Natsumi's Book of Friends. Yes, Natsumi Yojinsho Shishi is here, and I am super pumped for it. All right. It's kind of one of those series where every now and then I get reminded, oh yeah, this is coming in fall. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait. Natsumi's Book of Friends is easily one of my favorite franchises of all time. Every single season of it that- Yeah, th this, these series are, again, Otaku Spirit has a very developed, fine cuisine taste. We're just at fucking parking lot of 7-Eleven eating taquitos and fucking hot dogs at 4 in the morning, so... Probably not going to be for us, right? Comes out. I absolutely love it. And I cannot wait for this comeback. It's just there's so much like heart-wrenching, emotional, fun moments throughout the series that I just can't wait for it to come back. Kamiyarabe, God App. Yes, oh. it's a weird show. It's your God App. Is this some Mirai Nikki shit? Like Future Diaries? Everyone's looking at their phones. Is it a battle royale? What is this? Kotaro, the first season had its ups and downs, but over... Oh, it's a second season? Overall, I enjoyed it. It's just super weird and super cringe at times. Okay. And I can't wait to see where Yoko Taro goes. You know, it's a fucking sequel, so we're not watching it, I guess. Next. Beastars, the final season, like I said, it's supposed to come out in December. December. We'll see. <laughs> they Maybe we can see if there's any care for Beastars in my community. Because if it's in December, we do have plenty of time to prep for it. So we'll see about that. They said it was coming out in 2024. They chose to have it in the last month of the year. It makes me kind of worried about it. But yes, I've been eagerly anticipating the return of Beastars. It's right. final season. Apparently, it's going to be two parts. So I, I, hope, I hope it comes. But I, I won't believe it until it actually happens. So we'll see. I'm pretty excited for Offeretta. What? <laughs> Did you just say comes but i i won't believe it until it actually happens so we'll see yeah, i'm wait. pretty excited for Afaretta from my favorite isekai Afaretta, baby <laughs> Afaretta. <laughs> no no hate to him I, I just think the pronunciation stuff is funny sometimes howdy for the season three this anime it's so bad but it's good you know, it's so bad, but...
<laughs> it, it's good. My gripe with this shit is just random CGI dungeon monsters that I do not give a fuck about. But whenever we do a reunite with this other students, classmates, me, a power fantasy moment, those are the moments that I truly care about this show. And going into season three with the trailers, it's looking like it's a really hype, epic arc. Bunny Clan Revenge against the Empire. That's right, we're getting out of the kingdom. I thought that we were basically in the capital of the kingdom or something, but no, there's an empire, bro, and they're evil as shit. We're gonna go there and fuck them up. I am down. From Commonplace to World's Strongest Season 3, I didn't like so much the OVAs and whatnot, but I did enjoy the first and second season. It's mm. not like my most crazy, I can't wait for it series. It's all right. It's, again, it's not my favorite isekai, but it's definitely an entertaining isekai, and we will definitely check it out. But I have enjoyed it somewhat, so we'll see if it keeps up its momentum. And finally, my last one. Season 2 is a blur in my memory. What happened in Season 1? It's the introduction. I don't want to spoil it. Just key points. Main character ported in. Main character gets powers. Main character unites with classmates at the end. Saves them kind of from a threat. Season 2. Main character, what was, there was more saving us against the class. There's some traitors, right? There's some evil people, demons. Was it, was the demon kind? Yeah, it was more of like introduction to the demon people, new antagonist factions. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is a bit of a blur in my memory because we, we finished this shit months ago, but I'll probably check out some episodes just to just glance over them to catch up on what was going on in the show. One of my tin list is Ranma one half 2024 version. Yes, despite the fact that it's probably going to have the same treatment as Uta Yatsura, it's probably going to be very censored. At least from the trailers that I'm seeing, it looks mm -hmm. like it's going to do a little bit of a, rather than showing things, no at least kind of borderline it and have that etchy sort of just be there at the borderline, which that actually works out for me. So mm -hmm. I don't really necessarily need to show everything. So as long as it kind of gets a little bit in that borderline, I'll probably still enjoy it. Ron one half actually compared to Udes Yatsura has a lot more storytelling and characters in it. So I don't think you guys are really going to give a fuck about this show, right? I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Freshest anime is probably going to cover it. I'll let him lead the charge. Then we'll jump on the bandwagon if there might be an overlapping audience. I think that that's going to still work out in the end to be an enjoyable series. And it looks like MAPPA is doing an incredible job of the animation so far. So we'll see how it goes. Yep. For my honorable mentions for the returners, I'm still excited. Yo, where's Blue Lock at? He ain't gonna mention Blue Lock at all? Okay. To see Hanako kun come back. Uh, Oi Tombo having a second season, which is great as well. The fuck? You gonna, you gonna include a golf anime, but you ain't gonna include Blue Lock? Blue Lock coming back? I, if there is anything that we learn from the ReZero leaks, right? Apparently Blue Lock is cooked. <laughs> Blue Lock season two is apparently cooked. <laughs> Not in a good way, but... It, 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 that's just all bullshit. We, we don't really know exactly what's going on, so let's really find out for ourselves in October. Well, still have to get caught up on Love Live Superstar, which I'm excited to see that coming back as well for its third season. I think it's the first one to have a third season. Demon Lord Retry, I love the first season of that, but apparently this is supposed to adapt like a sequel of what's not been adapted, so I'm not really sure what's going on with that series, but we'll see. Shangri-La Frontier is coming back for its second Copyright Frontier, fucking Kodansha, man. If you are, uh, like, again, if there's any anime reactors on YouTube covering this shit, let them know. You are gonna get striked one way or the other. It's just a matter of time. Don't fucking risk it. Plenty of channels have almost gotten their channel deleted because of Shangri-La Frontier Season 1. Anytime you see a copyright holder with Kodansha on it, don't even bother. It's, you can win it after a lot of headache, but do you need to risk it just because one series? I am gonna avoid this like the plague season which i kind of enjoy that series and yes spirit chronicles are coming back oh yeah this shit uh, it looks so fucking generic <laughs> but it's probably right up our alley in the shit that we consume season two i mean season one didn't even fucking make it to the poll both i mean and, and even if it did make it on the it didn't even come close to winning both on patreon and youtube so this this, just, this is cooked We'll see where that goes. But with the returners out of the way, let's jump into the new stuff. All let's right. jump into my top 10 most exciting new let's shows go. coming in the fall 2024 anime in. season. Starting again from the very bottom and building up in the anticipation. For my number 10, I have Let This Grieving Soul Retire. It's the this is the one with the crazy thighs that we saw, right? The golden age for treasure hunters. Adventurers hungry for wealth, fame, power, and glory. Who All risk right. their lives in treasure vaults throughout the world. Dungeon let's hunting. Let's become adventurers. Cry and his childhood friends swore to become the greatest of them all. But that dream should have died the day Cry realized he wasn't.
Bro's name is Cry? Cut out for the job, yet expectations continue to mount, right along with Cry's fear for his life. While his childhood friends climb closer towards their dreams, this grieving soul has one simple wish, to pack it all up and retire. <laughs> this is an adaptation of a light novel series. Sounds like a washed up dude while everyone else is moving forward, but I'm sure he's gonna figure some OP shit out, right? Series being done by Zero G. Based on the PVs, it doesn't look like the most incredibly animated series, but at least has a nice colorful cast. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. This line here to show that cheek is crazy, man. But the thing that kind of jumps out at me besides the thighs, <laughs> besides <laughs> those thighs. Yeah. Yes, the thing that kind of jumps out at me is just the personality in. of the main character. Now, this is one of those things that for me, he sounds like a wimpy pussy that's gonna become hardened and change himself, or maybe he's gonna remain a pussy, I don't know. Me personally can either hit or massively miss. It's the concept of the guy that is just trying to fake it to make it. The guy that just doesn't want to get involved with things, but then whenever he gets involved with it, he has to fake it and make it seem like he's pulling something off. And... Depending on how well that trope is executed, it could be done in a comedical way where it's funny or it could be done in a very annoying way. Again, sometimes that can work really, really well. So I'm hoping this one pulls it off, but that kind of uncertainty that I have is what's really keeping it down here at 10. For Fair. my number nine, this Fair. I, I, I do like the whole idea of dungeon hunting and shit like that. This does seem like a power fantasy, you know? So we'll check it out. Here at 10. For my number nine, this is a late one to put... Yeah, we're not watching this. On my list, and I just kind of had to have it. My I don't list. think we're watching and that's this. Puniru wa kawaii slime. The no. slime created by the boy Kotoro can transform into. No, no, I'm skipping. I'm sorry. I, I am. I, 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 I am not watching this shit. Like, guys, should we watch this? I don't know. It's. It's a cute slime. I don't think we need to hear about this. I, I, I don't I don't care. I, I, nah, I'm gone. So I'm excited for it. Moving on to my number eight most. Okay, this is the Flat Earth anime. I'm interested in this one. Anticipated new show of the fall season is Orb on the Movements of the Earth. The setting is 15th century Poland. It was a time when heretical ideas led to those who possessed such a mindset to being burned at the stake for their beliefs. The like witches, heretics, you believe in around the earth you you're a witch burn what the hell is happening here this guy what the hell is he cutting off his tongue if he inserting something protagonist rafal a childhood prodigy is expected to major in theology the most important subject at the time at the university where he plans to skip a grade one day however he comes across a mysterious man mm -hmm. and is now studying a possible truth in the midst of heretical thought. Now this is a manga that is being adapted by, yes, Madhouse. And that is definitely showing in the PV itself. Oh, Madhouse anime. We're in. At least one episode, we're in. We're gonna be guaranteed quality. It looks incredible. It's got some fantastic music. The voice acting looks fantastic. Yeah. Just the I, I already love this shit. Like I'm always so interested in conspiracies and <laughs> shit like that. Cult witches. I know that cults and witches are not in here, but Something about the flat earth and, you know, uh, the truth being condemned and people being burned at the stake and shit. And it's Madhouse, like, I am in. The the directing and the style and the aesthetic of it looks really, really good. I'm, get, I'm getting sort of a, and it's nowhere near to the levels of it, but I'm getting sort of a feeling of something like Vinland Saga. Yeah! Which I think will really work well for this, because this is kind of one of those series where... Unless they really nail the storytelling and really have something Creepy. to constantly be gripping the viewer... I can see this being a series that can be really, really Balls boring. Because yes, the concept. Yeah, again, if the concept is good, but will the each episodes be actually action, not action packed, but dynamic enough to pe keep people engaged? Only one way to find out. Here is this kind of advancing what we know, then the ideas and the concepts of the stars and the movement of the earth itself, which yes, at the time was seen as something where you're essentially a witch or something. You're being burned yep. at stake just for trying to advance. Wasn't it like, uh, I think the common misconception, it was a like Galileo or per Copernicus. Anyways, something about uh, flat earth, something about revolving around the sun, stuff like that, right? Science and knowledge itself. I have like this cautious hope for it. It's one of those series where I feel like if they can really nail it, it could possibly end up being one of those kind of anime that you talk about for years to come. Moving on to my number seven, I have Trill- mm, Wait, the art? is not convincing me but hold up the concept of this do you have a what trillion dollar game old school mates haru and gaku for years to come moving on to my number seven i have trillion game huh. old school mates haru and gaku will do anything to achieve success and success to them means earning a trillion dollars such so as scamming people for trillion dollars is the anime that's that's pretty easy 
But to do so, they'll need to take full advantage of their own unique skills. Oh. Haru is a persuasive and confident speaker who can connect to anyone, while Gaku, although awkward, is an expert programmer. Will their combined talents be enough to make their dreams a reality? This seems pretty interesting to me, but the art style and the animation, I wonder if it's going to capture my audience. Again, another Madhouse show. So Madhouse? Well, it does look really good. It does look Maybe B team, C team. I don't know. I, I do enjoy the concept of it. It looks pretty stiff in the animation department, but I'm hoping that that won't matter for this series because it does have a lot of unique characters. I'm not a huge fan of the style itself. But yes, the one thing... Yeah, the art style is reminding me pretty old fashioned shows. The concept is interesting, but uh, I'm not sure. That is really pulling me in for this show. Rishiro Inagaki. Yes, mm -hmm. the creator of Dr. Stone, or at least the writer of... Oh, the author of Dr. Stone. Dr. Stone. This is definitely a writer that has a lot of experience in characters trying to do the impossible. Okay. And so I'm really hoping that'll actually translate into what seems like a more modern setting, business-like type setting. This idea of these two individuals just doing anything and everything business-wise whatever trick they can in order to make a lot of money and depends on how funny or engaging their hustle is right so this guy is like sweet smooth talker that's so sociable that's so can get along with anybody and the negotiator and this guy is the brains of the operation and comes up with the actual product for this guy's to sell so at a first glance it sounds fun but uh the execution we'll see and yes, whatever kind of threats that come their way due to the fact that they're dealing with a lot of money. Yeah. It's got everything kind of lined up for it to be a really incredible series, and I cannot wait to see what else this writer has to tell. Moving on to my number six, we have a series that I have been waiting for for... A lot of people have been hyping this up, and I intentionally also skipped the trailer reaction because I just feel like this is not in my community's best interest. I, I don't know. I just don't think you guys are going to like this shit. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm too biased towards the art style on the whole horror genre, but it's like... Horror genre, scary genre, some people are really into it, most people are really not into it. Quite a long time, and yes, that is the adaptation of Junji Damn, he got that book, and yeah, it's the author, Junji to himself. Toes Uzumaki. Now, Uzumaki is a series that I have yet to read yet, even though I do have it, but I absolutely love Junji Ito's work. Okay. But unfortunately, as most know, most of Junji Ito's works get pretty butchered when it comes to anime adaptations. They're typically... So this is going to get a, a butchered. Barely even moving or just the adaptation itself doesn't really adapt some of the more interesting stories that he actually has. Junji Ito is a twisted mind. This guy, I don't know, he needs help. He's really great at unsettling natures of things. His horror most of the time is not jump scares. It's just unsettling that continues to build up. And I really do hope that Uzumaki Spiral into Horror ends up being one of the first ones that they adapt really, really well. Maybe. I mean, Gyo was decent, but they didn't adapt like the best part of Gyo. <laughs> we have Studio Drive working on it. And yes, based on the PV. Don't know them. It looks CGI. Now. Yeah, it's going to be ruined. Listen, I don't want to be a hater, but I can already see this just failing. Not in my channel, personally. I'm sure it will fail on my channel, personally. But overall, like, I just don't think that, like, horror genre anime is something people give a fuck about. Not to say there isn't audiences for it, but definitely not in my audience. And it just, it's a hit or miss. Some people are really into it, but I think just as many, if not even more people, just don't care about this shit. What they're doing with that CGI, they have a cell shaded filter to it to make that kind of black and white unsettling nature of his art style really come to life. So while I'm hesitant because you can see that CGI feel to it with the characters turning and whatnot, it does it's seem like a lot episodes. of the shots where things get really weird and twisted, it is fully hand-drawn 2D. And so if they can... At this is probably something I'll watch by myself late at night high as fuck, just for a trip. I don't think we'll be reacting to this. At least pull off that twisted nature, pun intended. It can really turn out to be something absolutely fantastic. Again, the PV, despite that CGI feel in there, looks really, really good. So I have hope. I'm going to keep hope that this turns out to be one of his better adaptations, and it just absolutely nails the story. Well, the one positive thing I can say is that the director that's going to be working on this worked on Mushishi, which was actually really, really incredible. But they also worked on Flowers of Evil, and there is a lot of points throughout the trailer that does yeah. actually look more like, like that. rotoscoping. So hopefully it's not too much rotoscope feel, or maybe they're doing a combination of rotoscope and CGI. 
I don't know. We'll see. I just have a lot of hope because I just love Junji does work. Moving on to my number five. Yes, we have Gushing Over Magical Girls <laughs> is coming back. Yes, but... Gushing Over Magical Girls is returning. Yeah. Not really. Don't get your hopes up. I'm sorry. I apologize. But no, Acro Trip is coming. Chizuko, right. who lives in Sakai City, is an otaku girl who is a big fan of the magical girl Berry Blossom, who Utena. protects the city against the evil organization Fosa Magna. However, nobody was worried about the battle of the two anymore because Chroma, the wicked evil villain, was too lazy and weak. So Jizuka decided, I want to make my magical girl shine more. That desire leads her down a strange evil path. And then she becomes a villain to hype up the, literally, the fucking plot of, not the exact plot, but the overall framework is... Girl, super into magical girls, but needs actual good villains to make the magical girl stand out. Main character becomes that villain. So gushing over magical girls without the ob like obscene nudity and you know the fan service, which probably is better for us so that we don't get fucking just striked for fucking you know <laughs> limited ads and demonetizations. But yeah, I, I think that we can probably definitely check this out. Like I joked about before, but I, it's actually true. Watching the PVs of this series just gives me gushing over magical girl vibes. It's the concept of the girl who's obsessed, obsessed with that magical girl. And at some point, they end up joining the villain. Yes, at some point, she's trying to make this villain do a better job because everybody's bored of their back. I don't know, this looks pretty funny. It looks like he's on a grocery store trip, right? He's got like green onions out of the basket. It could definitely be a hilarious show. Battles. This magical girl isn't achieving anything when the evil villain can't achieve anything. So it's really her kind of join the bad guys just to give the magical girl some sort of competition. That way, yes, Literally the magical Utena. girl looks great. So it's so funny to see her as the villain, even though she's fighting against this girl that she loves so much. So I'm really looking forward to it. The PVs look really goofy, and hopefully it turns out to be a solid series. For my number four, we have Blue Box. Taiki Inamata love. I will not watch this. Not based off of the genre, not based off of the art style, but out of principle. Because the studio adapting this is the same studio that fucked up Power of God. So go fuck yourself. For my number three, we have something that's coming completely out of left field, and that is Negative Positive Angler. The anime right. story centers on Sunihiro Sasaki, a university student with a large debt, and is told by his doctor that he only has two years left to live. Jesus! <laughs> That's one way to start the anime. He's terminally ill, two years left. Uh, might as well just go enjoy life as much as you can now. Living the rest of his days in depression, Sunehiro one day gets chased by a debt collector and falls into the sea. He's rescued by Hana, a girl who loves fishing, and her fishing friends including Takaki. Hana urges Sunehiro to experience fishing for the first time in his life. This is gonna be sad as fuck. This is gonna be sad as fuck, bro. About a kid that has nothing going on with his life, two years left to live, but finally finds something for the first time that might be his reason to live, but there's only two years left. No, I don't like this. I'm not gonna watch this, bro. Life. And Power of God is a different student than Blue Box? Which studio was it? What 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 studio was this? Blue Box is season one Targa Studio? You motherfuckers like in that Tower of God season two video I was making shitting on it. You monkeys told me that Blue Box is the same fucking studio as season two. I got gaslit. You motherfuckers fucking gaslit me. All right, my bad. I take it back. Blue Box is not the same studio as Tower of God season two. It is season one. And season one Tower of God was good. But I'm still probably not going to watch this because... You guys don't give a fuck about sports, bro. Especially not rom-com sports. I know your ass is not gonna watch this shit. And Takaki work. And he slowly gets hooked into fishing. This is an original drama that is being done by Studio Nut. We have the writer that's working Studio on it Nut. has worked with Akka 13, One Punch Man, and Tiger and Bunny. And we also have the director that worked on Saga Tanya the Evil as well as Punchline. So there's at least a decent pedigree working on this project as an original project. Usually whenever I see original projects, I get pretty excited for them. I just love the- It's gonna be sad. This drama is gonna be so fucking sad. You can already see how it's gonna be sad. He literally finds his reasons to live and to pursue something when he has two years left to live through this girl by fishing, like, no. 
a series where there's no source material to go based on and you're just going into it completely blind. But I will say this is definitely a series that the moment I watched the PV, I just kind of became sold on it. The concept here of somebody who just doesn't have much time to live for, and not only the fact that he doesn't have but two years left to live, but additionally having all these debt collectors coming down upon him, just making the last few days of his life just absolutely miserable, looks so refreshingly contrast to kind of this fun experience that he's having with these people just doing fishing. It's somebody kind of just starting over. That's, that's the concept. Yeah, but starting over fully aware that what you're experiencing right now is limited and you can no longer like, like it is such a cruel thing to dangle this fucking hope in front of you when you have two years left to live. And maybe that's like a doomer way of viewing things. And maybe we should be more positive and say, isn't it nice that even though he has two years left to live, he actually finally got to experience something that's worth living for. And maybe that is the part and that probably is the moral of the show, but God damn, bro, I don't watch the anime to get depressed like this. What's up here is it, at the very end of the trailer, it just talks about the concept of starting over, despite the fact that he doesn't have much time to live, while also accepting the fact that everybody has a finite time to live. It's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's gotta be Mother's Rosario all over again. I don't want this. Kind of living in the now and enjoying the time that you actually have. And I'm really hoping that the storytelling they have for it just turns out to be fantastic. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Moving on to my number two. Yes, we all knew this was going to be the- Dan da dan. Probably the most hyped anime coming in. Mm. Dan da dan more hyped than ReZero? I don't know. We should go check out Google uh, Trends later on. List somewhere. At somewhere in this list, this had to be in here. It's probably easily the most anticipated show of the fall 2024 anime season for so many people, if you're not including mm -hmm. returners. Dan da dan. Yes. That series is coming out. This is a story of Momo, a high school girl who comes from a family of spirit mediums, and her classmate, Okorun, an occultic fan. After Momo rescues Okorun from being bullied, they begin talking. However, an argument ensues between them, since Momo believes in ghosts, but denies aliens exist. And Okorun believes in aliens, but denies that ghosts exist. Hmm. To prove to each other what they believe in is real, Momo goes to an abandoned hospital where a UFO has been spotted, and Okaran goes into a tunnel rumored to be haunted. To their surprise, they each They're encounter both overwhelming paranormal activities that <laughs> both ghosts and aliens are real? Transcend comprehension. Amid these predicaments, Momo awakens Banana. her hidden power, and Okaran gains the power of a curse to overcome these new dangers. All their right. faithful love begins as well. Love. That's a series that when I heard about the adaptation, I was kind of curious about it. So I jumped into the first couple chapters and yes, the show, good? the, the story is. Hey, yo, what's going on with the girl in this current scene, man? Self is absolutely bonkers. Yeah. It's got a, a hint of raunchiness to it. It raunchiness. doesn't really hold much back. And based on what I've seen so far of the new series coming out, it looks like they're not going to hold too much back with the actual adaptation. And that has me really excited. A series that just gets absolutely bonkers for the sake of bonkers. And again, has no filters. And a lot of my hope for this series, the fact that Science Saru is working on it. And they're not really known for holding much back and being really, really creative with their designs and their style. While I can't really claim that I always particularly like their style, they always pull something very unique off. And I'm really hoping that really does come across in this adaptation. Again, right. don't take my word for it. It's easily one of the most anticipated shows of the season coming up. And I'm just really kind of, it's unfortunate that it had that whole leak, leak kind of yeah. take a lot of the steam out. And that all comes down to my number one Mm, what is this? Dan 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 is probably going to be the most, but again, if my wife became an elementary school student, bro, this fucking this title, bro. <sighs> I get it. Viral marketing. You want to hook the audience in with an insane title, but I hear the actual story is good. But no matter what, I, I, I don't think we're going to be watching this. Most anticipated show of the fall 2024 anime season coming up. And yes, that is if my wife became an elementary school student. If guys. Not she did if... Now, hold on. Stick with me here. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. for this. Okay. The trials and tribulations of a single father who one day meets the oh, reincarnation God. of his deceased wife. That's the... All right. She's reincarnated. But she's a fucking elementary school kid. There better be no diddling going on here. That's a synopsis. You know what? That's a good synopsis. Let's just go with that synopsis. It's actually a really good synopsis. But no, the reason why I'm so like excited for this show is that yes, I watched the PV and I thought it was cute. And yes, having Aoyuki voicing the returning wife was fantastic. Aoyuki does an incredible job, and I think she fits this little girl so perfectly. Now, yes, when the trailer was released for this series, it really took until the trailer was released. Suddenly, out of nowhere, social media just was outraged. All well, of course! 
Guys, look at the title, bro. It's just making anime fans look so bad. Oh my gosh, what a horrible idea to adapt this. Why are they adapting the story about this guy going out with an elementary school student? That's not what the story is about. So you fucking clickbaited. You literally catfish with a dumbass title that's gonna get people outraged, but the story is actually not about that. I don't like that shit. Feels like I got fucking de deceived. I'm not gonna watch it. Out. And I found that out because- Not that I wanted <laughs> the title to become true. That sounds bad. As in, I got deceived, now I'm not gonna watch it. Implying I would only have watched it if it was the title. No, 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 that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm not talking about the content at hand. I'm talking about the principle at hand. Don't get me in, don't get me wrong. Because yes, upon hearing the outcry, I went and read the manga quite a bit. I would probably say I've read up to probably what's gonna be episode four or so. Okay. And yes, this story is absolutely incredible. This isn't a story about some guy falling in love with an elementary school student is not it's okay. about a family that lost a mother and how much that destroyed the family mm. how much heartbreak went for this family and how they never really recovered from it and then yeah it's too heavy drama for us right i don't know I'm, I'm not i don't watch you guys don't watch this shit some of you might but slice of life drama shit like that it's probably the least favorite genre in this channel and at some point this girl's showing up at their doorstep and saying they're their mother and everything about their past kind of getting dredged up but additionally, the story of this girl that shows up, I think is actually one of the most heartbreaking stories that I came across. The moment that it really started hitting with her story, I was sold. I was like, this is it. This is gonna probably turn out to be my favorite show of the fall season. And maybe the story is amazing. Give episode one a try? Nah, I'm not, I don't care about dramas like this. I genuinely don't give a fuck about dramas like this. Call me a fucking monkey all you want. Someone that can only enjoy hype shit. You know that's a fucking lie if you've seen any other fucking reactions on my channel. But, uh, no, I don't want it to. I'm not here to fucking watch a melodrama talking about feelings and how sad things about life is. That's not what I watch the anime for, man. I want to be entertained. I want to be hyped up. I want to have fun. Not to fucking be reminded of the cruelties of this world. I think it's so incredibly well done. And I really can't wait for it. If you're afraid of it because it kind of gives that feeling of an older guy with some girl, don't. It's not. It's not really the title. It's, it's more about the story. Same thing with this story, Negative Positive Angler. Dangling fucking hope in front of a guy that has only two years left to live and then finally giving him something meaningful to look for, but there's only a limited time left. Sounds fucking sad as fuck. Same with this shit. I, I'm not about this story. It's done. And I really can't wait for it. If you're afraid of- Like, I'm not saying that these stories are bad, by the way. These stories are probably the, probably the best written stories compared to some of the other bullshit going on here, right? Let's not get it wrong. In tops of, like, an objectively good, deep written story and complexities of characters, for sure these are going to touch more on it. But that's not what I want the anime for most, honestly. Of it because it kind of gives that feeling of an older guy with some girl. Don't. It's not that. That's not the story here. It even makes fun of that and talks about that taboo. It's not that story. It's really incredible, and I cannot wait for it. And that's it. That's my top 10 most anticipated new shows of the season. For honorable okay. mentions, I have the Magical Girl Inc. I think that looks really, really fun. It's just what the hell is this? Another Magical Girl show? Just a massive question mark based on the quality of the actual show itself and the PV. The story of a girl who's unable to become a mage. The PV looks gorgeous. There's so many mage magic girl shows, huh? Gorgeous. Fantastic art design and everything, but... It's also one of those shows where I think it's just going to be a fluffy, feel-good show. Nina and the Starry Bride looks pretty decent as well. You Are Miss Servant looks like it could be fun. We'll see. Hmm. Big titty me taking care of a Shoda. Demon Lord 2099. I'm, I, I've really not seen too much from the PVs themselves, so I'm just really up in the air with it. it this looks like a shitty show that we could enjoy. If it does pull off what it's doing, which is a futuristic demon lord it could be really fun and finally tying the knot with the agamagi sisters yeah i gotta have a nice harem show even though it's the typical shrine maidens marry one of them type of show hopefully it's decent the main character kind of looks like a jerk though so i'm not sure if i'm gonna enjoy it and that's it that's all i'm gonna cover with this most anticipated right. series coming thank you mr otaku spirit for the breakdown of the animes that he's interested in we'll be going over ourselves the any chart videos and see exactly what animes are airing but my most anticipated well, down to down for sure, but of course, ReZero, we've been prepping for that the entire time. Of uh, the different sequels, probably ReZero. I'm kind of interested in Beastars too. 
But we'll see about that. But other than that, this one, right? The flat earth one is also very interesting. And the slime one, not really. Uh, this guy, it could be an interesting power fantasy. But a lot of interesting choices to pick from. Again, we'll be going over our own list later. But hey, please go give Mr. Otaku Spirit a follow. Go check out his channel if you haven't. I can't sub to him because his Mushoku Tensei content's gonna spoil me. I'll see you next time.